Good morning and welcome to the offices of World Literature Today magazine at the University of Oklahoma. My name is Daniel Simon. I'm the editor-in-chief of WLT and my colleague Michelle Johnson, our managing editor, is here as well. Good morning. We're here to talk about the September issue of WLT which is called Lives Interrupted. And if you haven't seen it yet, it has a spectacular cover on the uh, spectacular cover photo with uh, this depiction of the island of Lesbos off Greece, which is um, really kind of the ground zero of the refugee crisis in 2015 and 2016 and even today. So we saw this particular photo and thought it would really evoke well the theme of the issue. And we're here, of course, in Oklahoma, not far from Houston and our neighbors in Texas and South Texas along the Gulf who are being affected by Hurricane Harvey. And so we wanted to make sure we acknowledge what everyone there is going through in terms of interruption and displacement. That's really a tragedy that's unfolding and, and uh, so our hearts go out to our viewers there. But uh, to let us know where you're watching from, we'd be grateful to hear where you're at this morning and, and watching us from all around the world, we hope. So the concept of this issue, we've really just been talking about for over a year now in terms of what's been happening. And as we mentioned, the, um, the EU crisis is really grab most of the attention, but Refugees International tells us that there are 65 million people uh, displaced currently around the world, and that's the highest number since World War II. So that's really something that struck us as being uh, timely and of importance uh, to all of the writers that we're featuring in this particular issue. So um, the eight writers that are featured here kind of help us see behind the statistics, and we wanted to bring their stories to you. And Really, I will let Michelle tell you a little bit about some of the featured writers who uh, she helped bring to the issue. Gosh, um, there are so many. I um, wish we could talk about them all, but maybe we should just start with Gianni Scaragas' story since we were just talking about the cover, Daniel. Yeah. Um, and that cover uh, photo is echoed then in his story. Gianni's a writer from Greece, and this actually isn't the first time that we featured him. I believe we have a, a published two of his stories in the past. Mm -hmm. Wonderful uh, writer from Greece. And this is a really haunting, mysterious story um, that and in which the uh, some Greek islanders are seeing these boats that are coming in, and but there are any passengers on the boats. And I think that this story um, that really evokes the, uh, the cover photo and they echo back and forth across the issue. Um, but that, that story is in the special section. And then there's a piece of a creative nonfiction, a creative nonfiction essay by Leonora Fleece, a Slovene writer, called Zeros, um, that I think really um, brings home in a very concrete way the experience of um, people who have migrated um, to a new location and the importance of numbers. In this case, the importance of a social security number living in New York City. Um, but really the importance of numbers in people's lives, having numbers, not having numbers, um, in very concrete ways that a, a really uh, fantastic piece of creative nonfiction uh, brought to us in translation by Christina Reardon, who's one of our uh, recurring translators. Um, in fact, I think Christina wrote our first translation to Steve Block piece. Um, so we've uh, really come to depend on her and are, are grateful for the work of our translators who have brought us so many wonderful pieces over the years. So that's just to mention a couple of the, the pieces in this special section. There are several others. Yeah, eight featured writers here in this particular uh, cover feature. And speaking of translation, there are some nice poems mm -hmm. here by Eli, Eli, Eli Eliyahu, who is an Israeli poet writing from the Mizrahi Jewish tradition. And Kevin Hayworth is his, is his translator. And Kevin writes a piece uh, called The Translator's Note that's in the no, the notebook section of the issue, and he talks a lot about um, Eliyahu's background and, and the, the actual experience of translating these two particular poems into English. And this one is called Simple Thing, and part of it reads, There is no simple thing. From olive branches do not make clubs. There is no simple thing at all. From discarded stones do not build a wall. There is no clarity in ease. Where the house stood there is a little mound of dust, and from the dust we came. As they say, it is no simple thing to walk in another's shoes. So there again in a poem, a very short poem like that, you get this sense of displacement and uh, what it means to walk in another's mm -hmm. shoes. It's really kind of a powerful 
sense of that um, human dimension to these stories that are always so present um, these days. So, so that's one I wanted to point out, as well as the essay by um, Mariana Pogosian, who is an Armenian writer who has lived in Japan and currently lives in the Netherlands and writes about being a young girl underneath her grandmother's kitchen table and hearing the toasts of all of her parents and her aunts and uncles and her uh, grandparents as they remembered uh, the genocide of Armenia from 1905 and her own great-great-grandmother carrying her children on her back as she was fleeing to uh, survive. And so her, her great-grandfather is also invoked in this particular piece and, and she writes very movingly about her own sense of being living in, in the diaspora. Um, and so that's another one I wanted to point out to you as well. What else is an issue, Michelle? Well, moving out, I guess, outside the special yeah. section, um, a piece that I found really fascinating is the interview with Simon Armitage, the British poet, translator, um, essayist. I mean, he's, he's so prolific. He's written so many, so many books. Um, but that's a really fascinating uh, interview. And then we also, in the book review uh, section, have a review of his recent translation of the 14th century poem, Pearl. And that's a review written by Greg Brown. So we do have some really nice features about the poet Simon Armitage that I think a lot of people would find really fascinating. And, um, so that's something beyond the special section um, that I would point to, encourage people to take a look at. Yeah, it's a great interview, again, touching on questions of translation, which are uh, really at the heart of what WLT is all about. Another essay I'd like to bring to your attention is Matthew Shinoda's Peterbaugh essay. This Peterbaugh tradition is, uh, in terms of the essays, it's one that we've gone back since 2016 to mark the 90th anniversary of WLT being around. And so we wanted to feature in this particular issue, uh, Matthew's piece on, it's called Verse Africa. And he writes about six African diaspora poets, women poets who are doing wonderful work in the Anglophone tradition. And it's really worth checking out. Um, in fact, two of the featured writers in Matthew's piece, Ladan Osman and, and Matem Shikara, will actually be coming to Oklahoma on November 8th through the 10th for the Newstat Festival, which we sponsor as jurors for the Newstat Prize. And so we'll actually get to meet them in person. And uh, Matem has a piece in the issue called uh, What to Read Now on Contemporary African Writers that, they, that she thinks uh, are worthy of your attention. So, so Matthew's essay, again, I think really brings a great um, diversity to the issue in terms of representation geographically and, and, um, and beyond. So. Again, the theme of diaspora really kind of touches in many different ways this particular issue. So beyond that, really the thing to look out for are the reviews that really make up uh, about a third of the issue. And this is um, a great opportunity to learn about the latest book by Jenny Erpenbeck, who is the featured uh, author in the, the section on her uh, on novels, which... And she'll be here as well, and she's coming this spring, isn't she? Again, within the Peterbaugh uh, festival tradition, she'll be the fellow, the visiting writer on, in residence next spring in March when she's here with her principal translator, Susan Bernofsky, mm -hmm. who will be coming from Columbia University. Uh, Jenny is a German writer who lives in Berlin, and she'll be here to take part in the, in the festival uh, that week um, in March 2018. So her new novel, Go Went Gone, is the featured review in this particular issue. There's also, and it again deals with the refugee question in Germany. Uh, there's another review by um, Elfrida Jelinek or about her new work, which deals with uh, refugee questions in Austria. So, so those are some of the featured reviews. There's another one uh, of Sinan Antun's latest book, and he writes about the Iraqi diaspora. And one other one by Kafka Kasabova, who has a book called Border. And she's writing from Bulgaria, or at least from that uh, that's her homeland, and she writes about these kind of transitional border spaces in southeastern Europe and the Balkans and beyond. So, so those are some of the featured view, reviews to look out for. Are we looking, issue. anticipating an essay from her coming up yes. soon in an upcoming issue? Yeah, in the January issue, the theme will be resistance, and so Kafka is writing the, the Peterbaugh essay for that issue as well. So, so we'll be eager to read what she has to say on that topic, but. Really, that's the, the, the gist of what we wanted to say about the September issue. I hope you'll find out more by uh, discovering it in your local bookstore or subscribing. And you can follow us on Goodreads and Instagram and Twitter at a little bit today is our handle. 
And this coming Tuesday, we also have an announcement on Facebook Live, which will be for the finalists for the 2018 Newstat International Prize for Literature, and will be at Barnes and Noble here in Norman so, um, Tuesday morning, September 5th, to make that grand announcement. So we will do that, and I think that's about. Do you have anything else to add, Michelle? Uh, no, I can't think of a thing. But we appreciate you tuning in, and um, please, uh, please read. Look forward to being your passport to great reading, and. Hope you read the September issue. Please let us know what you think about it. Indeed, we'd love to have your feedback. Thank you so much and join us again.